So one thing I've really come to appreciate lately is having a different monitor for different tasks. Now I realize not everybody's in a position to be able to do this, but I love editing on like a 32 inch 4K panel. Refresh rate doesn't really matter when you're editing and you get a ton of screen real estate. But like for competitive gaming, I generally like a smaller panel, lower resolution and a much higher refresh rate. But today we're checking out a 4K monitor from BenQ that depending on your gaming and media needs, may actually be a solution that covers all the bases for you. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're checking out the EW3280U 4K Entertainment Monitor from BenQ. All right, easy stuff first. This panel we're looking at today is 32 inches. It retails for $799.99. They also make this in a 27 inch. It has a slightly reduced feature set though, so everything we talk about today is gonna be specific to the 32. The case on this thing is gorgeous. Gunmetal gray with like industrial copper accents. This is a 4K IPS panel. It's got five millisecond graded gray. And even though it does have free sync, it's limited to 60 Hertz. So not for the competitive FPS crowd. Instead, this monitor not only puts an emphasis on image quality, but audio quality as well. And also a feature set that could make it usable for both your monitor and your main television. So we've got wide viewing angles, a wide color gamut, it's a 10-bit display, and it supports HDR 400 that I've seen and been pretty underwhelmed by on other monitors that top out at 400 in its brightness. This panel tops out there too, but they have a couple new modes here around a proprietary tech they call HDRI. Cinema HDRI is obviously for HDR video content and adds saturation and detail to areas that may be too dark or washed out. It also cools off the image a bit too. So if you ever find HDR content to have like that orangey haze, this goes the other way. Can't confirm, I like the viewing experience much more in HDRI than standard HDR. Stuff really popped in Altered Carbon and like the Mandalorian. The HDR experience does not rival a high-end TV with true thousand nit brightness, but this is on par with some entry-level stuff that I've seen from like Sony or Samsung. You also get gaming HDRI, which seems to affect like the brighter areas of the screen. HDR as a technology is still pretty hit or miss on PC, but even so, you can see the difference in these blown out areas up here, where like the gaming HDRI goes to work both in bringing back some of the detail and also in shaking off some of that orange tone. Horizon 4 on the whole looked more dynamic in HDR but less consistent than SDR. I could take it or leave it here. It's worth noting too that you can select all of the HDR profiles with SDR content for like an emulated HDR mode if you like the look of them. The bump to contrast and saturation looks good on some stuff and not so much on others. It's also nice too that if you're watching a Blu-ray either from a dedicated player or a console that this monitor does support 24 FPS native. But my biggest issue with HDR on this panel, all the modes, is that when you first select them they are very bright and vibrant and then over a few seconds they start to dim out. If you select the modes again you get that full brightness and now it feels like you're missing out on the potential of the panel. Like the color spectrum is still there but the whole experience feels muted. Some stuff in HDR is a little too dark, like you really need to be in a dark room. See, all the HDR modes are tied to the ambient light sensor, that little piece of hardware inside the monitor that detects how much light is in the room and adjusts the display accordingly. There is no way to disable this in the HDR modes. In regular mode, you totally can, but I'd really like to see them implement the ability to turn this on or off in HDR, because if portions of what you're watching get too dark, there is no way to adjust that. All the picture modes, access to the brightness, whatever, all that stuff is completely deactivated while you're in one of the HDR modes. So if HDR is something that's really high on your list, you may wanna look someplace else. So this monitor also has built-in sound, and that's usually one of those things I would just blow right past and hook up some speakers or a decent set of headphones. But it actually does have a 2.1 setup inside, and BenQ has put a big spotlight on this in the marketing materials. I'm pretty into audio, so it's tough for me to get too stoked on this. I would say these sound like a low to mid-level 2.1 system in terms of sound quality, not in terms of separation. They sound a little bit better than an entry-level TV, I will give them that they're the best speakers I've heard on a monitor though. They do give you access to a few DSP presets. You can tailor that sound depending on what you're watching and there is more separation there than I imagined when watching media. I definitely would not use these for competitive gaming, but if you are gonna use this thing all the way across the room like a TV, there is plenty of volume there to fill a small room. The only caveat, the only warning I would give you at all is that on the very, very max level of that volume, 
you will start to hear that cabinet resonate a little bit with bass. Audio aside, this thing looks amazing. I've edited all of my videos on this thing since it showed up six weeks ago. One thing I really like about it is the tactility of all the controls. In the event you are using the onboard speakers, there's a nice big volume wheel under the lip of the left side. On the right, you have the stuff you need most positioned behind the right edge on the rear. So the top is like input select. Next down is a toggle for screen mode, so you can easily turn on like blue light filter on and off. All the way down is power, and right above that is the multifunction joystick. It's got easy access to screen brightness and contrast. Now, this is my first monitor with a joystick style control, and aside from the Zowie puck setup, which is the best thing ever, I don't really ever want to use a panel that doesn't have joystick control again. If that's still not enough, or if you're planning on viewing this at a distance, you get a remote as well. It's nice that you can cycle all the HDR modes via the remote, I also like the fact that with this holder, you can dock this remote directly under the panel and it just gives you even faster access to different settings. But for a monitor that aims to be the centerpiece of your entire entertainment experience, I see a big missed opportunity here in that there are no preset user profiles that I can toggle through. It would be really nice to be able to set up a profile that would select the input, the picture profile I like for that, SDR versus HDR, the audio setting I prefer, all of that stuff set up so I could toggle between what I was doing, like watching TV, watching movies, working or gaming. Another opportunity for me here is the stand. It does have cable management built in, which is great. It's perfect for the aesthetic, but it offers no like tilt or pivot or height adjust. As a tall guy, I would like to have this panel sit about three inches higher on my desk. Now to get around this, you can't tilt it back. I actually like editing like this. It also does include 100 by 100 vase mounting, but I would advise you to use a monitor arm that's rated for like 20 pounds and up just to be on the safe side. This panel is heavy, like around 18 pounds. The fact that it sits so low on the desk makes connectivity pretty tough as well. Like even plugging in USB-C for laptop use is a bigger challenge than it needs to be. As far as connections, you get headphone, two HDMI 2.0, display port, and the USB-C port here has video, audio, and data, and also has charging support for up to 60 watts. This means you have a fast charging option for iPhone at your desk all the time. Not sure if it supports Android fast charging. It's a good option for MacBooks as well because it will charge that MacBook and it even has an in-book mode for color matching. And because it's BenQ, you also get their suite of features like color vision accessibility if you have a specific color weakness and a ton of options for like ambient brightness adjust, break reminders, multiple levels of blue light filter, etc. They obviously understand that some of us will be spending a lot of time in front of this thing. I definitely do. So at $799.99, does this represent a solid value? For me, it really depends on how many of your use case scenarios this monitor can cover for you. If you're looking for a panel that you can use for work, including professional graphics and editing work that will handle your casual PC gaming, two consoles, or your cable box, a Blu-ray player, whatever, and your laptop, one unit that can handle all that, but you don't have to sit right in front of it. You can sit across the room due to the audio in the remote, I think it's strong, like for a dorm room or bedroom scenario, killer. If you have specific areas where you're already invested, like you're already into audio, speakers, or a DAC amp headphone setup, the audio aspect probably won't interest you. If you're a casual gamer or you play a lot of different stuff, okay. If you're a competitive FPS player, this is not it. If you already have a crazy TV with thousand nit HDR support or HDR is really important to you, this won't get a lot of use either for media consumption, so you really gotta weigh it all out. No matter how you use it though, you still get a very detailed IPS panel. Solid IPS too, 95% color accuracy, and no backlight bleed, like none at all. Depending on when you watch this, you may find a $50 off single use code for Amazon in the description, which will put this at 750. And unless you're willing to part ways with some of the features here that may not be important for your use case, this is a lot of flexibility for that money. Like I won't use the audio on it. I'll probably won't do any competitive gaming on it at all, but I have edited on it for hours at a time and then put my feet up and watched an HDR movie on it. It's performed consistently, flawlessly. Since I got it six weeks ago, I've used it every day. Loads and loads of hours on this thing editing and ultimately it's earned the spot on my editing desk replacing the Acer Predator 32 inch 4K G-Sync. As always, links down in the description for everything we talked about today. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.